Hi, I'm Kara Wanagatimu, and welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. This is where we show and tell great productivity solutions using Azure and Office 365. And I'm extremely happy to have one of my good friends and our, my guest today, Andre Magno Gordon, who works in the Power Apps team here in Microsoft. And thank you for yes, coming. Yes, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I'm so it's glad exciting. that you're here. It's always fun to come and do these with you. Uh, I appreciate that. Well, we're <laughs> happy to be back on the air on Channel 9. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I know that you and I are super familiar with Power Apps, but could you tell folks out there what Power Apps actually is? Some, some people may not know. Okay, sure. So Power Apps is software as a service. What it is, is it's a tool for enabling business to create business applications for the mobile devices uh -huh. and for the web. So in essence, what's exciting about this is I create one app with Power Apps, and it automatically, without any effort on my part, works on I iOS, so iPhones, Android, and Windows Phone, as well as it runs in the browsers, as well as it will run on a large screen, such as a Surface Hub. So you kind of build once and get everything, which is what I love about it. And then one of the things that I also love about it, if you look at this slide here, you'll notice that basically it's this three-step process. You connect the data somewhere, then you build forms and it, the UI for, for working with that data without any code. So a business person who doesn't know C-sharp, that doesn't know JavaScript, can jump right in and build these applications. And then when they're ready, at any time, they can publish it to their organization. So they don't have to go through an app store process and wait for approval or anything. The business is empowered to build and publish as needed to, to, meet, to meet their needs. That sounds so exciting. It and is. I know people yeah. have had, you know, it's great if you have a larger development team and you want to go through the store publishing process, but many of us are business people. We just want to automate a business process. It doesn't need to be all really that complicated. Right. And maybe we're working with a small team of people that we want to have feedback exactly. to it. That sounds really interesting. Now, yes. when I used to do this sort of work, I would do it in InfoPath. Mm. Um, how do I think of Power Apps now and, and InfoPath and, and the future there and how those all things connect together? Well, I believe, based on what we can do now with Power Apps, that whatever you would normally in InfoPath do, you go ahead and start doing that in Power Apps. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and you'll be surprised at the things that you'll be able to do with a slightly different twist ah, um, okay. using Power Apps. And I find, because I've d developed an InfoPath for 10 years, mm -hmm. I find that I can do a lot of things a lot faster and with a much uh, more refined uh, user visual impact, you know, mm -hmm. as far as colors and design, yeah. than I ever could in InfoPath. Yeah, user experience is so important, and we all know that yeah. the days of build it and they will come are over. Yeah. Uh, users have a lot of different opportunities to uh, enter information, deal with information now from a variety of different companies as well. Yeah. And so it's important to build things that really take in that user centric view. So exactly. I bet you have one of those to show us today, do you? Yes. Excellent. So I actually, if you don't mind, I wanted to demonstrate how you can do this yourself. That's great. That's okay. great. We'd love to see. So here I am in my SharePoint list. And I'm looking at a beautiful list in my modern experience. And I really do love the modern experience on SharePoint. We have a lot of opportunities to create lists quickly with these new tools that enable us to create columns and so forth quickly. So I've already made a list with all of the videos that I'm planning to record and the people that have to be the speakers for those videos. So a lot of information in this list is about the creation of new video content for our Power Apps community, mm -hmm. all right? So what I was envisioning is a mobile app for this that will enable people to like focus on what they do, right, every day, and also isolate a couple of screens in this app that are just for me, where I can, for instance, set a deadline or make a comment for office use only, so to speak. And so I'd like to show you how quickly you can make a Power App, because in fact, you can make a Power App if you want to, right now in under three minutes. Oh, we love that. Okay. That's fantastic. Then I'm going to extend it and show you how to isolate those screens. Okay, that's great. Okay, so here it is right here. You don't have to go far. You Right on the uh, uh, Modern Experience, you'll see it listed there, Power Apps. And all I'm going to do is click on Create an App. Now that's based on, on the customer's license also, is that correct? 
uh, if you have Office 365, your Office 365 includes Power Apps and Flow. Oh, excellent. Okay. All right. So it's now, right there as a part of O365. You always have it. Office excellent. 365, Dynamics 365, it's yours. Excellent. There are situations where certain premium connections and common data service modeling mm -hmm. will cost more because it'll require an additional license, but you get this, what I'm doing today, out of the box. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Excellent. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to name this my video plan planning app. Well, I think I gave a name like that. So I'm going to do video plans, just like that. And I'm going to click create. So it's probably the hardest part of this was figuring out what name I should give the app. <laughs> 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 that. Because here's the beauty of Power Apps working with Office 365. I am sitting here with my cup of tea, and it's doing all the work for me. This is wonderful. Look at that cute little animation. Too. I know. It's building the forms that I need for the list. It's connecting the data. It's also uh, parsing that data to kind of figure out, okay, which forms need what data. And it's ah. plugging all the formulas in that's needed to edit and submit data. And I'm just relaxing. So all this that I used to do by hand in InfoPath, essentially, or maybe I had some tools to build it, the system's actually doing for me now. Exactly. Ah, so it's and more if intelligent in a way. Yes, because in InfoPath, when you go to customize a list, you basically just got one form. You didn't get a complete app. No, you didn't. Right? No, you you didn't. had to create your own pages to make your edit forms and your and your new forms and to kind of make a variety of experiences. And all of this is in the cloud since this is Office 365. Exactly. So to me, would you, would you characterize this as an example of the intelligent cloud? Oh, I definitely would. Um, because we're talking about uh, an application that's, uh, that's already understanding what I need to do. Ah, uh, that's great. Right? And so it just does it for me. That's right? fantastic. And it's, this is for the, the end user who doesn't code. So if you look at my UI here, I have these three screens that are made for me. And this is a lot like SharePoint. Mm -hmm. I mean, not SharePoint, um, PowerPoint. In, yes. In PowerPoint, you, you, you make slides and you move those slides around. These are all move aroundable, just like in PowerPoint. Oh. I drag and drop screens around. Um, if you notice, there is a screen here that allows me to kind of add other components if I wanted to put images in here. Uh, I love the way this does quite a bit of work for me. Over here, I can figure out, okay, what is the layout that I like the most? Maybe I'll choose this layout. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of pick randomly picks what kind of forms it wants to have, you know, oh. as far as what forms are necessary. So what you're saying there on that r right hand rail is that those are pre-configured form types and if I select one, it's just going to apply itself to what was already built. I don't have to move the fields around individually. I don't have to size things. I don't have to do any no. of that? No. You can start by picking a layout. Um, I, I really like that. And you can also, when, you're, when you think about the way this looks, you can also set different uh, media backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You can add other data sources. You can even choose themes. It is a really friendly experience for someone who is comfortable in, say, PowerPoint or Excel. Mm -hmm. okay? That's great. Right. Now, sometimes it doesn't pick the fields you want. Like, maybe I don't want the title here. In this case, I do. But maybe I want it to take up more space, but it's just a matter of just like in PowerPoint. And if you notice, as I move that one, all of them change. I only have to edit the first one, and it knows, okay, well, you probably want your gallery to be consistent, I right? See. Now, maybe I want this to be the person that it's assigned to. Now, if you notice over here, whenever I click on something, it tells me what that field is in SharePoint on this right bar here. So there's two titles in here, one there and one there. I don't want two titles. So maybe I want that to be the deadline. Excellent. Okay. And that's all the data right from the SharePoint list. So exactly. what I'm viewing there is a list of the columns in the SharePoint list, right? Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. I believe this is the comments field, and you can see that there, right? Now, certain fields, and I will give you this heads up, Caruana, certain fields like complex choice lists, mm. if you want a pe people picker or a choice list, you have to come up here and just kind of hit the dot, mm. and it shows you all the fields, including complex fields. I see. All right? So if I want to choose, like, from a choice list, I'm going to choose product focus, and then I'm going to add an extra word called value, and this pulls in my complex fields. That's wonderful, because that's such a common scenario when you're doing form development. Yes. You want to either filter items by that, you want to group them. Exactly. You definitely want to show it on the gallery. Yes. That's fantastic. And
And what's wonderful about this, search is already configured for you. So if you look up here, but just by selecting this gallery, the items are being filtered by search. That is whatever's typed up here, right? So it's already put those formulas in here. And in this case, we are searching by title. But you can search by whatever you want, which means you can change this word to whatever field you'd like to search by. Oh, that's it excellent. is also going to do the sorting and descending, ascending and descending when I press this button here. So it'll sort by the same thing it's searching by, or you can configure it to be something else. Oh, but all this has been done for you. Right. Right? And by the way, this app instantly works. So what did we do? We click, click, clicked, we watched some animation, and now if I want to edit this, so which one is this? A quick look at creating apps. So I'm just going to put uh, my name here at the end of this just so you can see the change. And I'm just going to go ahead and say accept that change. Okay, so I, I've made my change. What happens? It automatically connects up to SharePoint and it makes that adjustment. So if I alt tab back to SharePoint and I refresh this screen, then you'll be able to see that I changed, I put my name in the comments area. So I'm just going to scroll over to the comments area and you'll see there's the change. Look, the change is right made there. there. Yeah, so I can edit, delete, and add new items to my SharePoint list. And this automatically runs on my phone, just as you see it here, right away. And because this is a public app in this list, I can actually publish it immediately out to all of my users so that they can get it from their phones. Mm. Now, I see this running in your Edge browser. Yeah. Will it work in other browsers yes. and mobile phones? Yes. Just right? Your most that's commonly supported browsers, it works wonderfully in. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. and mobile devices as well. The mobile devices, Surface Hub, web, desktop, that's excellent. You got it all and in one app. And we just did app. it in like five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I really love that because it just shows, you know, I don't need to be a coder to make these apps work across platforms. Oh, we right? love that. That is so So I wanted, to, I wanted to help you go a step further, though. Oh. Right? Because remember I said you could isolate certain screens to certain people? Yes. So I'm going to scroll down here to the edit screen. So if you notice, you get a browse screen or a gallery, then you get a single item edit screen. I see. And then you get an uh, edit form, okay. which also works as your new form. Ah, okay? okay. Now, if you ever don't want some of these fields in here for some reason, you can just highlight them. Like, let's say, let's highlight this one and press delete. It's okay. I'm not deleting anything on SharePoint. I'm just saying on this form, ah, okay. I don't want that, right? And but I can take this item and say, I want that up at the top. So I can either drag here, which is a little tricky if, if you're not using a mouse, um, and so and I'm not, I'm using my finger. I'm going to use it over here on the right, which is a little easier to do. Mm, I see. So it's a drag and drop it's editing. It's a drag and, and ordering. drop editing. And when you deleted that field, you didn't delete anything in SharePoint. The column in SharePoint still exists. Exactly. You just removed it from the form, right? Yes. Okay. So you can drag and drop to move things around, and that's how you get things in the form you want. Excellent. Now, let's suppose I want a form for my users and a form for me as a manager. Okay. Right? I can take this screen and duplicate it. So that you notice I just selected duplicate, mm. just like I would do in um, PowerPoint, right? Right. Now I can rename that, uh, for instance, for office use, right? And I can decide that this form, right, only needs a couple of things. Maybe it needs level, it doesn't need level, it doesn't need duration, it wants deadline, because that's what I'm going to be setting here. Uh, it wants status source and it wants the assigned to. I see. Okay. Now, by the way, if you want your comments fields to get bigger and kind of look more like, you can just go over here and choose multi line text. Oh, that's beautiful. Just everything is click, click. It's, there's no, you know, big, there's no thinking hard here. I don't have to enter in no. the quadrants <laughs> or hexadecimal no. numbers no. or any of that no. stuff, right? That's now, great. at this time, there's no way to get to this form in this app. There's no navigation element. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a button on the bottom of this form. I right? see. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of this page here. And I'm going to actually move this up a little bit just for now. And I might remove some of these fields as well because they don't want to see, we don't want to show them deadline because we don't want them to edit deadline. Right. 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 And we don't want them to edit assigned to. So those two we might remove. I see. Okay. So now over here I'm going to add a button. I'm just going to do insert controls and I'm going to add a button. 
and the button pops up at the top. So I'm going to put this in full screen so you can see where it went. And I'm going to move it down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have one of those high resolution devices. And I'm going to change the text on the button to read uh, office use, ah. right? And this will be the way to get to the other form. I see. All right. Now, if I click on action over here and then navigate, I can select the office use form ah. right here. So now it knows when you click that button, go to for office use. Now, but Carolyn, I don't want people to be able to click that button right. unless they're me. Exactly. Right? So what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to go into the visible property and say only make this visible if the user, let's do user uh, full name equal Audrey Gordon, which is who I am. Okay. Uh, let's just make sure I didn't do any mistakes. And then I need to, that's all I need to do. Oh, uh, then I put true. So it is only going to be visible if the username is Audrey, right? And so I noticed that as you were doing that, it went away for a moment and then it came back because you are Audrey Gordon. Yes. So even in this edit mode, it knows that you're Oh yeah, you. we're WYSIWYG. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, and this is a good point to prove to you that only I can see it. So right now you can see there's a button and if I use it, it will take me to this private form. That's great. Right? Now, I'm going to go back there and kind of prove to you that it would be invisible if I'm not Audrey. You know how I'm going to do that? I'm just going to make me Audrey Jones. Ah. Right? Because now I'm not the right user. Exactly. Right? So if I do that, now I do not see that button. That's fantastic. So you see how you configure these custom views. Now, in your SharePoint list, you'd also want to use your content type to hide those fields. Correct. So that they can only be accessed from the app. That's right. Isn't this awesome? I love this. I mean, it's and fantastic. in minutes, I've made a business solution that enables me to manage my team's work and, and report out on it as well. What I love about this too is, you know, for those of us who've been doing collaboration solutions for a long time, yes. we know how long these things can take. Yes. And we also understand that there's a change investment required in moving to the cloud. Yes. But this is, these are the kinds of capabilities you get as a benefit of being there. Mm -hmm. So though it may take a while to move from on-prem to the cloud, uh, once you're here, you have these tools that are available to you that really speed yes. the time to value. Yes. So uh, for me, that's really exciting. Uh, it is. It's it's very exciting to me too because you know I'm that person that that person that kind of lives all those hats of the business person, the consultant, and so forth. Right. And what I want to do is I want to get my work done. I don't want to have to wait for a lot of planning and IT approval. Sometimes right. I just want to get it done. And here's the thing about the business. They know what they want to do. Yeah. They don't have to go through a long requirements pull. Right. They know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they now, go home and do course, it. Of course, for, for my IT friends out there, yeah. we know <laughs> that there are security and compliance requirements. But yes. this is also the beautiful thing of Office 365 in that yes. that security and compliance work and those information protection workloads are already a part of Office 365. And you're going to be able to see some of those in future episodes of Coffee in the Cloud. Yes. So we want you to come back and see that. Oh, yeah. But we it, have a whole offering for the IT pro. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's really enabling business within the guardrails of a secure experience. Yes. And that's the beauty that's of what true. we do. That's now, true. if our users who are watching want to get involved and learn more, what, what do they do? What do they so do next? So I wanted to show you our community site. So if you just do powerapps.com, it'll resolve to here. And when you get here, you'll get like an introduction of what Power Apps is and stuff. But what my favorite part of this is, if you go to the Learn dropdown, there's documentation, there's even guided learning. So that SharePoint list I was showing, that was a reflection of the truth. We are actively building videos to give you even more content. So if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to build an app from SharePoint, what I did today, you don't have to remember what I said. You can go here to this page, and there are videos included in a, on each page to help you step-by-step -step understand how you build an app from SharePoint. And then it also helps you to talk about, you know, how do I break down these apps into the display form versus the edit form versus the gallery. So it's very helpful. And then also I'd like to see you get involved. Have fun with this, right? We have a whole community where we have 
a uh, forum. This is where you can post questions. Notice somebody posted a question here. We're monitoring this 24-7. Someone's going to answer your question. If you have an idea, let's say you come up with something, you say, I'd love to see Power Apps do this. I'm the one that's actually looking at your ideas and I'm making sure that we can find a way to get it into our roadmap. And then finally we have the community blog and we let our members blog. So if you get really good at this, boy, I would be so happy to sponsor you as you blog on our site. We're so excited about that. And you know, if you ever have any doubt that people at Microsoft are listening to you, please don't. Uh, between the technical community, the blogs that we're showing here that we have for our various products, and our instances of user voice that we use all across our company, we are actively listening to your suggestions. Right. So every time you share something, somebody inside Microsoft is reading it, and so we definitely hope that you'll get involved oh, in our yeah. communities and, and share your guidance about how we can make these products more productive for you. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, oh, That Audrey. was fun, thank you. Awesome, that's a wonderful uh, session for us. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Coffee in the cloud. Please leave your comments below. You'll also find additional links to Audrey's content that she was referring to. We're happy to have you and we'll see you again soon.